I am a research assistant at the uh, University of Ljubljana in Faculty of Arts. Uh, I work at the Department of Translation, uh, where I also earned my master's degree in interpreting studies. Uh, I'm working uh, in the field of corpus linguistics, where I mainly investigate uh, uh, corpus mediated uh, communication. Uh, and uh, I'm also interested uh, in parliamentary discourse, but also in uh, spoken language, which fits nicely uh, with the two areas I just mentioned. Um, however, currently I'm mainly working on my uh, PhD, where I focus on figurative language uh, or um, more spe uh, specifically on metaphor in um, socially unacceptable discourse. Um, which is an umbrella term that uh, uh, includes all kinds of violent and offensive uh, messages. And I'm investigating um, such a discourse on social media. I've known Clarin now for uh, a couple of years and uh, my experience has been uh, always a very positive one. Um, I, I gained a lot. Um, not just because uh, I, can get, uh, I can get a lot of um, resources, uh, mainly the corpora, which are um, the, the basis of my, um, of, of my research, but uh, also different funding opportunities and the community um, where I can always find someone that can help me out with my uh, questions regarding uh, my research work. Um, but maybe one of the most important things uh, I see that Clarin contributes um, at this stage of my career um, might be that um, Clarin is uh, showing me how um, language data and the research that we do can be uh, purposeful and relevant even outside my narrow um, research field and uh, even beyond academia. The work that I'll uh, that we'll talk about uh, today, the tutorial "Voices of the Parliament," um, is uh, was a collaborative work done with Daria Fischer, uh, who is associate professor at the University of Ljubljana and also um, the Daria National Coordinator for Slovenia. Our tutorial "Voices of the Parliament" uh, uses corpus of parliamentary records to investigate the impact of gender on parliamentary debates. In this way. Uh, we were able to show how uh, richly annotated corpora can be used not only to answer um, linguistic questions, but also to investigate societal and cultural phenomena. Uh, we wanted to develop a tutorial that doesn't um, require from uh, the users any programming skills. Uh, so our tutorial is, um, consists of two parts. Uh, as usually it has some, um, some theoretical background and then a practical part, which is divided into three tasks. Um, the tutorial is uh, built in such a way that the user can easily jump from one topic to the other, uh, or, um, well, uh, he or she can do everything uh, part by part, or uh, just skip the parts that um, they're not interested in. Um, the in the first part, in the theoretical part, the users uh, get to know the basics of corpus linguistics and um, briefly um, um, find out what are um, the, the main uh, findings of uh, gender studies into parliamentary discourse, but also um, gain some knowledge into the, the specifics of parliamentary records. This helps them then to understand what are the limitations posed by the data um, that has been chosen for, for this research. Um, but also for uh, what research questions can actually be answered with such data. Then the practical part consists, as I mentioned, of uh, three tasks. And in those uh, tasks, we uh, show the users how to uh, use the basic but uh, very uh, powerful corpus analysis techniques to answer um, three broad topics. The, the first one is about uh, the production of parliamentarians, 
The second one is about uh, the most prominent topics that uh, are discussed by female and male parliamentarians. And the third task is about um, the topics, the issues that are related to women. Um, in order to answer those, um, those questions or to investigate those topics, we use frequency lists, keyword lists, uh, collocation, concordances, and we uh, combine all those uh, with some manual uh, analysis close reading. We were um, really happy to be able to do the entire tutorial with uh, only Clarion provided um, tools and uh, resources. So we use the CPARL um, 2.0 corpus, which is provided through the NoSketch engine concordancer. Um, and both of these um, um, materials are available through the Clarin um, National Center uh, of Slovenia. So, of course, we um, encountered some challenges and uh, it, it took us quite a lot of time to, to prepare the, the final version uh, because we really want, wanted to uh, implement all the suggestions from students and teachers uh, that gave us feedback on our tutorial. But um, maybe as, as the, the two main uh, challenges that we encountered um, was the first one, the um, the time period needed for uh, for developing such a tutorial um, because we didn't want to use just uh, generic query terms in order to show how a particular concordance uh, work um, but we wanted to uh, embed uh, the corpus analysis techniques that we were um, uh, that we are presenting into uh, a a realistic research um, question. So um, this made the, uh, the development of the tutorial quite complex because we wanted to uh, make it um, accessible to a broad range of users. The second challenge that we encountered uh, was related to corpus uh, updates because the CPAR uh, corpus got updated um, in the middle of our development of the tutorial and we weren't aware um, before that. So uh, when we uh, when you prepare the tutorial, it's really good to, to keep in mind that this can happen because uh, such updates of software, for example, and even corpora can make a tutorial um, obsolete. In our case, however, because we didn't focus uh, on presenting the um, uh, techniques alone, but to embed them in actual research uh, question, our tutorial won't get irrelevant even if the um, the user face of the concordancer gets changed. Uh, we will only have to redo the screenshots and screencasts that show step by step how um, the tasks are performed. We thought about uh, reusability on several uh, stages um, during the development of the tutorial. Um, and I'd say that the first point is that we provide our tutorial in two languages, in English and Slovene. Um, with English, we think it's important because um, in that way, uh, it can be used by really a broad range of users. But with uh, the Slovene uh, version, we wanted to uh, encourage our local community to also uh, perform and, uh, um, and look at data also in, uh, in our national language. Then the second um, point with regard to reusability concerns the actual data we used, uh, that is the parliamentary debates. Uh, we used uh, parliamentary debates intentionally because the parliamentary corpora are among um, the most uh, comparable uh, corpora that are available now through um, uh, through resource families, also thanks to the Parla Clarin initiative, and can be easily accessed and, and searched uh, through Clarin repositories. And then the third point with regard to uh, reusability is the methodology. The users um, 
that will do the, the tutorial uh, will will get to know and will learn and also uh, stimulate the techniques that we uh, show to the point where they will be able to um, to think of possible uses of those techniques also in other contexts. <laughs>